kinship is defined as two persons akin to each other when they are linked by socially recognized bonds of descent or marriage or both. The important thing there is the social recognition. Kinship is not about biology and the biological links, but the re realization that you are linked to someone else. Secondly, there's the question of marriage. We'll start with a basic definition that marriage is a union between a man and a woman such that children born to the woman are the recognized legitimate offspring of both partners. Later we'll see how many difficulties there are in that definition. In order to illustrate some of the very complex systems one finds in various parts of the world, some symbols are used by anthropologists. There is a symbol for a male, which is a triangle. There is a symbol for a female, a circle. A symbol for someone of unknown sex, a diamond. If someone dies, you cross them through. If people are brothers and sisters, siblings, you have them joined by a line. If they are married to each other, you have them joined by a line underneath. And as a result, one can construct kinship diagrams where, for example, one has a mother and father and the children. Alternatively, may, one may not want to draw a diagram and one might, might want to describe a relationship. And in such an instance, one uses strings of letters. Either the first letter, M for mother, B for brother, D for daughter, or the first two letters, M, F, B, and so on, for or Br. And so one can string these together and if one was describing one's mother's, brother's, daughter, one would put M, B, D, and a number of texts have these strings of letters. There are one or two other terms that are useful here. One of them is um, the term ego. If you want to enter a kinship system, you need to enter it at a certain point, and you use the Latin term ego, meaning I, and you enter at that point. If you want to describe a set of brothers and sisters, or brothers or sisters, you talk about siblings. If you want to describe the relationship based on marriage, you talk about affines or affinal. If one wants to describe the relationship based on blood, one talks about consanguines, consanguine being Latin for blood, or consanguineal. If one wants to describe the relationship upwards and downwards in a line, like grandparents and so on, one talks about lineal relatives or relatives on the side, like uncles, one describes it as collateral, lateral being the side. Now, very briefly, let's just have a look at what one might discuss in relation to one kind of society. Anthropologists dis divide societies into four main types, hunters and gatherers who live off the surface of the landscape, extensive food producers, those who live off pastoralism, that is herding or slashing and burning in forests, intensive food producers who use hoes and plows to a great extent, who are known as peasants, and industrial societies, either of a collectivist kind in the Eastern European mode or capitalist societies. Let's look at the simplest of these to begin with, hunters and gatherers. In such societies, the first one thing one might look at is descent. In such societies, descent or who one thinks one is related to is usually based on both male and female lines. You think you are related through your father and your mother simultaneously. In such societies, therefore, there are networks of relatives who you can trace through both lines. This is very much like our own system and it's not difficult for us to visualize. Here and in all the other characteristics I'll describe, in fact, hunters and gatherers have features like our own. A second feature is inheritance. In such societies, there is often very little property, very little, few rights in particular articles and artifacts and land to pass on, and therefore inheritance rules are not very systematic or important. The individual, in fact, tends very early on to make his own tools and earn his own living. The terminology in such societies isolates out the nuclear family. You have particular terms for your father, your mother, and children, just as we do. And it's for this reason 
but in fact Western kinship terminology is are technically known as Eskimo, after the copper Eskimos have who have the same kind of system as our own, which isolates the nuclear family. You have particular terms for them and separate terms for cousins, uncles and aunts. In such societies, marriage choice is based on individual choice. Marriage is a contract, so to speak, between two individuals. The wider society is not particularly concerned. There are not large groups which are negotiating the marriage. And again, we have many parallels with our own society. There is often very small amount of ritual or ceremony at marriage. There are often very few marriage payments. Marriage is not the occasion when there is a large transfer of wealth through bride wealth and dowry and other things we'll be looking at. In these societies, one tends to marry one person of the opposite sex. They're monogamous, whereas most societies are not. Again, in the societies like our own, the household structure is very simple. It's usually parents living with young children. The sexual and gender relations have a similarity with our own in that there is a great equality usually between males and females, and sexual oppositions are not heightened. Indeed, kinship is relatively unimportant in many of the simpler societies. There is no great interest in your ancestors or in your descendants, no great concern to adopt heirs. Now, all this seems quite self-evident, but when we turn in the following talks to that great middle range of societies known as tribal and peasant societies, we'll find that in almost every respect they diametrically differ from that very simple characterization and from our own conceptions. And it is to those instances that I will turn in my next talk.